Good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? Hey, man, I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. But I want you to know the celebration, the party is not over. Amen. Let's continue to celebrate Jesus this morning. Let's continue to celebrate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and worship with everything we've got. Amen. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We're here today to continue to celebrate you, our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Come on, can we come to church this morning with just as much anticipation and excitement as we woke up with yesterday on Christmas morning? Come on, how many of you woke up yesterday with some anticipation, some excitement? I know I did. I know my kids did at 5.30 in the morning. Wake up with some, some excitement and some anticipation. Come on, let's approach the throne room of heaven today with some anticipation and some excitement. We have the opportunity, the blessing, the privilege of standing before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in worship this morning. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I want to encourage you, as I'm encouraging myself, to take joy this morning. To hold on to the hope, the strength, and the life that is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To hold on to salvation, to hold on to the truth, and to worship this morning. To continue to celebrate this morning. Jesus, my mighty God and King. Amen. So we're going to continue this morning to just lift up his name, to lift up the name of Jesus. Can we do that this morning as we put our hands together?
to this world. But now you reign as king. You be the Lord of our lives. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, what a privilege we have to worship you. What a privilege we have to praise you. What a privilege we have that you would call us sons and daughters. We thank you, Lord.
to be reminded that you are the great I am, that you are the King of kings, that you are the God who provides, the God who loves, the God who restores, the God who heals, the God who brings peace, the God of salvation, of hope. Lord, we remind ourselves of that today, and we, we declare those things today over ourselves, over our homes, over our families, over our cities, over our community, oh God. We, we declare these things, oh God. We speak the truth of who you are. And we worship none other but you. We worship your great name alone.
on, let's lift up a shout for Jesus in this place. Come on, let's celebrate the victory of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Come on, let's get excited today about who he is, about everything that he has done and everything that he has yet to do. My God is a good God. Amen. Worthy. Worthy. Deserving of our praise, deserving of our worship, deserving of our celebration, deserving of our hearts, deserving of our lives, deserving of everything that we can bring to him. Lord, we bring you all that we've got this morning. We surrender to you, oh God. Lord, in this, this last Sunday of this year, we look back on everything that you've done in us, with us, and through us, and we celebrate you. We celebrate your life. We celebrate your hope. We celebrate your strength. We give you thanks, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. Amen. What a great service we've had so far. Merry Christmas, by the way. I hope you had a wonderful time with, with friends and family and enjoyed this holiday, enjoyed this season. And I said at the beginning of this service, the celebration's not over. The party's not over. Come on, let's not stop celebrating our God and our King. And as we do that this morning, one of the ways that we do that is through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. I, I want to ask you a question, and you don't have to answer. I just want you to think about it. How many of you have ever received a gift, one thing in particular that just meant so much to you? I, I think we all probably have had something that we've received. Maybe it's something you got this year for Christmas. Maybe it's something you've got in years past, but you received a gift that stood out to you. And it's a wonderful thing to give and to receive gifts, right? For, we exchange gifts with those that we, we love and we cherish. But today I want us to take time to celebrate the greatest gift that we've ever been given. I want us to stop and, and recognize that when God sent his son, when God sent Jesus, he sent us his absolute very best. God sent us the very best that he could. He's blessed us with a gift like no other. Through Jesus came hope, through Jesus came life, through Jesus came salvation. God held nothing back when he sent his son. And because he sent us a gift like no other, because he sent us that gift like no other, we, in turn, can be generous to others and to be generous towards God. I want you to know, I've said it numerous times, the generosity of this church absolutely blows me away, encourages me to see so many people give so generously and so faithfully. Because you've given this year, I want you to know that this church, there has been 44 people baptized right here, right where I'm standing. 44 people this year. We're supporting, we're supporting about a dozen missionaries here in the US, in Mexico, in China, Africa, all over. Your generosity is impacting so many lives, so many people. Just recently, we were able to partner with our community. We were able to supply food for Thanksgiving dinners for families, Christmas presents for families. We've done school supplies and, and partnered with our schools. We've been able to help so many families in need. Listen to this. Every week, an average of 260 children and youth 
are ministered to on Wednesdays and Sundays. God has used your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings to bless so many people this year. Thank you so much for being generous in this past year. And we look so forward to seeing what God is going to do in the years to come as we continue to faithfully give, as we continue to be generous, as we continue to, to, to bring our best to the Lord and watch what he does with what we bring to him and put in his hands. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, thank you so much that we get to be a part of seeing your kingdom come and your will be done right here in Brownsville, Texas and all over the world, oh God, as we give our tithes and our offerings. Thank you so much that we get to be a part of your plan, oh God. Thank you so much that we get to be a part of you reaching the lost. Lord, thank you so much that we get to be a part of helping to care for others. And Lord, as we continue to give, I pray that you would just continue to allow us to be a part of your plan, oh God. Lord, as we give generously, I ask, Lord God, that you would take the things that we feel like are small, the things that we feel like are insignificant, the things that we feel like won't matter or won't make a difference, I pray that you would take those things and, Lord, you would make a massive impact in this city. You would make a massive impact in this region, in this community, and, and all over, oh God, as we bring to you the very best of what we have, even when we feel like it's not enough, oh God, you are more than enough. Lord, we ask that you would take these tithes and these offerings, bless them, multiply them, use them for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, GSEC. We are so excited that you're able to join us for our Sunday service. We want to welcome all of our guests this morning. If this is your first time joining us, let us know by scanning the QR code located behind every seat. If you're joining us online, please text CONNECT to 956-395-1551. You'll be redirected to fill out our online Connect card. We would love to get to know you and stay connected with you. Mark your calendars for a night of worship on Wednesday, January 26th at 6.30 p.m. here at GSEC as we worship and declare the goodness and faithfulness of God. This powerful bilingual time of praise and worship will kick off our spring 2022 semester of Connect Groups. See you there. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at GSCC. Well, good morning. Everybody doing okay this morning? Man, look at you out here on the Sunday morning after a long Christmas day. Could you just give yourself a big round of applause this morning? Those of you that are connecting with us online, God bless you. Man, it's so good to, I wasn't sure whether you're going to have 200 or two people here this morning. You know, because just Christmas has fallen in a kind of during the weekend and it makes, we got families coming in and families going out and there's so much activity going on. Man, it's so, I am so honored to be with you this morning as we gather here and online to continue to, as we close out the year, to talk about the great, not just holiday of Christmas, but the birth of our Savior, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to just share a couple of thoughts with you this morning. And uh, that as we talked about and during new, our New Year's Eve service, that unto us a child was born. That's what we were celebrating. But he's more than a child. We talked about he, he's our Savior. He's our healer. He's our, he's our comforter. He's our encourager. He's, he's our strength. He grew up to be a man, had a mission, and his mission was to seek and to save those that were lost, including you and me. And so as we celebrated Christmas and as we close out the year and still during the weekend of Christmas, I want to talk about this child that became a man and he, he described himself as the good shepherd. And that's powerful. And I want us to get a little glimpse of an insight into this child that was born and we celebrated. He grew up and then he became my good shepherd. 
And so I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. And as, and as he was unfolding his ministry, he tells a parable. He, he told many parables. And I want to share one of, the, with, one of those parables with you this morning. And then I want to talk about the Good Shepherd and how he impacts our life on a regular basis. Look with me, if you would, this morning in Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read the first seven verses. He's speaking. Here's Jesus, the child who was born, who grew up to be a man, who came to destroy the works of the devil and who came in to seek and to save those that were lost. And he says this, he says in, ver in chapter 15, verse one, he says, then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. By the way, the scripture, other scripture says, for he did not come to, to it's not the, the healthy that need a physician, it's those that are sick. And we just don't realize, but we're all born sick because we're born dead in our trespasses and sin. And he says, so he spoke this parable to them saying, what man of you? Here's Jesus kind of trying to say something to them about who he was. He says, which man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. I pause for effect. Because whether we realize it or not, we all were one of that one that he went out and looked for until he found us. Now, it's not like we were lost. He knew exactly where we were. It's talking about in a spiritual sense that we were lost and he had to bring us unto the Father through himself. And he says, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. See, because sometimes when, I don't know about you, but when he found me, I didn't know what to go, where to go, how to do what I needed to do. So he picked me up and he carried me and he led me to my new life. He says that when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. It's interesting that he refers to us as sheep. He says, And I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Father God, I thank you this morning as we pray in your presence that you would continue to lead us and God, us thank you that you describe yourself as the good shepherd and you give us ears to hear your voice and no other voice will we follow. God, I pray that this morning as we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus the Christ, who became our shepherd, who became our, 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 uh, the one who took our sin upon himself and paid a debt that we couldn't pay. I pray today that you'd give us a deeper revelation of Jesus the Christ that you sent to our lives to rescue us, to carry us, to lead us, and then invite us to partner with him to go find those that are still lost. We commit this message to you in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Listen, have you ever been lost? I mean, really, really lost. Anybody, anybody out there ever been lost? Say, yeah, I've been lost. I'm not talking about spiritually. We've all been spiritual. I mean, you got lost. Some, I, know, I, I know I have. Let me, let me ask another question. Have you ever had a child that you lost somewhere? Anybody? I mean, you're not, you know, 30 years later. Yeah, honey, he was really lost. I told you he wasn't, but he really was. I had no idea where he was, you know. And I just remembered, I was reminded this morning as I was in the shower that uh, uh, we, you know, Alan Hickman, who's our friend at Pic Picayune in the Resurrection Life Church, they had gathered, we had gathered in Houston, Texas. He has 11 sons. Those of you that, if you've not met Alan, he's coming back in the beginning of the year at some point. He had 11 sons. I don't know how many he had at that time. Uh, maybe eight or nine. And we had our children and we all met. We were in Houston for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And during the, the week, during the daytime, all of the Houston Independent School District and surrounding area, they send their children on field trips to the rodeo. How many of you are familiar with that? Just, I'm just curious. Just. Anyway, so can you imagine in Houston, there's a big rodeo, and all the schools are taking them on field trips, and they're all going to the rodeo. And so we're walking around, and we're debating, do we get on the mechanical bull, or do we eat some food, or what are we doing? And we're having a good time, and then all of a sudden, we realize that Samuel is lost. One of Alan's little boys was lost. I mean, he was little. I don't remember exactly how old he was. And all of a sudden, panic set in. Anybody ever get panicked over thinking you've lost one of your children somewhere in a big crowd? And so all of a sudden, I mean, we're frantic. I mean, we're but those lows. We're looking everywhere, trying to, trying to find little Samuel. Samuel, if you're watching, God bless you, man. I'm glad we found you. He, he, <laughs> you're a great young man. He's doing great things. And 
And, but anyway, so we were, and all of a sudden I could see the panic coming in on some of the adults that, that we were with trying to find this, this boy that was he, was, he was lost. And I mean, there was kids that size everywhere. I mean, it was packed. And all of a sudden we stopped and we said, wait a minute. Let's not panic. We don't know where he is, but God knows exactly where Samuel is. So in the middle of the rodeo, we don't care who's watching. They look at those crazy people. I don't care. So we're holding hands and we're praying, said, Father God, Samuel is lost to us, but he's not lost to you. You know exactly where he is. Would you send somebody to arrest him, hold him, until we reconnect and reunite? And so all of a sudden the peace of God came and then the next thing we know is that the officers are coming and they're coming with little Samuel. Samuel's got candy by now and little, you know, little teddy bear or whatever and we, and, and we found him, but, but we didn't find him. God found him and put him in a place where he was safe until we could reunite and reconnect. I want you to know this morning, those of you that are here, those of you that are out there, for us personally, for those of us that maybe have children or grandchildren or, or relatives or friends that are lost, I want you to know that they may be lost and we may feel like there's no hope in, in them being found, but Jesus, the good shepherd, knows exactly where they are, what they're doing, and he knows how to rescue them and save them and arrest them until they come back and are reunited with God the Father in a relationship that he has for them. That's Christmas. This child who became a man, who is now the good shepherd, who is always looking for us. Matthew 9, 36 says, but when he saw, speaking of Jesus, the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. The New Living Translation says they were distressed and downcast. Jesus said in chapter in John 10, 11, says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, which he did. Ezekiel 34 uh, prophesies and he says, as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. Then in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25 says, for you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The New Living Translation, you have returned to me the shepherd and garden of your souls. We were lost, and even after being found sometimes, I know you told you know my testimony. Sometimes we stray, we run from the shepherd, we hide from the shepherd, just like Adam and Eve did at the very beginning when they sinned, they hid from God. And we have a tendency to run and hide from God in times of trouble or difficulties or whatever it is that's going on in our lives. That sometimes we stray, we we go away from instead of run to the Father. And I had these thoughts: why do sheep stray? Why do sheep in the natural stray? And I think we can make some correlations to why sometimes spiritually we can stray from the one who's come to find us and has found us. And even after being found, sometimes we have a tendency to stray from him. And so here's some thoughts that I wrote for you, okay, real quickly. He says, sometimes sheep stray because they're for perceived greener pastures. They say, yeah, this is good, but I've got, and I'm not just talking about other churches. I'm talking about other plans, other purposes that we feel will satisfy us. Sometimes sheep want independence. We say, I can take care of myself. I used to hear it all the time. Hey, Christianity is a crutch for people that are weak. Well, I, I guess I'm weak. And, it, and, and I, I don't see Jesus as a crutch. I see him as my support, my strength my direction, my, my protection, my provision. Sometimes sheep stray because they just want to be different. They don't want to follow the crowd or the masses. Some get lost in the masses as they mingle in other places just, you know, with other sheep, just like at that, at that rodeo. Sometimes sheep become attracted to sheep and begin to listen to sheep instead of listening to the shepherd. Some sheep are wounded and can't keep up, so they stay behind or quit because it just gets too hard. Some sheep become hard of hearing and can't discern the shepherd's voice. Some sheep are so hungry they can't wait to get to the green pastures, so they settle for a substitute to satisfy their hunger. They stop to satisfy their hunger while they could be at the pastures that God has prepared for them, his word, his strength, his life. You know that Esau was so hungry that he sold his birthright to fill his belly. There are many reasons, GSEC family and friends, why sheep stray. 
but the end result is the same. People are wounded and get hurt and get discouraged, get confused or disappointed or angry or bitter. There's just lots of reasons why sheep get scattered. And, 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 and by the way, and we've all been there, done that to some degree in our Christian walk if we've been a Christian and a believer long enough. Some sheep are just lost. Some sheep are genuinely lost. And by the way, these sheep that stray, they're not bad people. They're not, we just get distracted. People, sheep get distracted and they get unfocused and we, and we lose direction and we lose you know, focus of, of where God is taking us and what he's called us to, to be as, as individuals, as husbands, as wives, as parents. But some sheep are just genuinely lost and they need a savior. That's why Christmas is so important. The message of Christmas, the message of the one who came that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We need a savior. All of us need a savior to be saved spiritually, to be born again. That's Christmas. The way to the father through this one who came as a child, who's become our good shepherd, who wants to lead us to, good, to still waters and green pastures, who we can declare as David said, he is my shepherd. Not I'd, I'd like for him to be, or during Christmas he is, but he is my shepherd. He settled that. The shepherd will never stop looking for us. He's always looking for me. He's always looking for you. And when we get lost in the busyness of life and distractions of life and the hurts and the disappointments of life, I'm so grateful that he is still looking for me, that he never stops looking for me. And sometimes he uses other people to help find us, not save us, to find us, to invite us, to get to a place where we're still enough that he sometimes then says, God, I, I'm willing, but I'm just so tired and it's just such a long season that I need you to pick me up and carry me for a season until I get to a place that then I can partner with you and help carry others, not to a church building, but into the kingdom of God. The shepherd is always looking for his sheep. And this shepherd, the one that we call Jesus the Christ, I want you to know that he loves us. He's praying for us. The Bible says it sits, he sits, it sits at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for us until we're found, until we come to that place of knowing what it is to be picked up by the shepherd, led, directed, and protected to the purposes that he has. I'm going to ask you to put something up for me because I want you to know something today before I close this service and this message. The Lord gave me many, many years ago an acronym for the word Christ. There it is. And I was looking as I was preparing the, this message and the series I was looking in this, in, in, a, in this binder where, that I've carried with me for a long time. And in this binder, I wish I could show it to you, but I found this business card. How many remember when we used to have business? Well, I guess maybe we still do. And I, I picked it up. I said, what is that? And it has my name on it. It says, the Encourager Church Lifeline Youth Ministry, Mark 10, 45. And it was when I was served as a youth pastor at the Encourager Church in Houston, Texas in the early 90s. And I pulled that out. And I remembered that. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, where did that come from? And when I turned, turned it around, this is what is written on the back of this business card. And I remembered all of a sudden that quickly, just a couple of weeks ago, when I was sharing with the team, that this is what I used to hand out to people. That I wanted to know that there is a good shepherd that's looking for them, regardless of their circumstance, where they are, what's going on in their lives. And so I say, yeah, here's my, if you need, if, we'll, if you need ministry here, call me. I, and most people don't call. But I wanted to make sure that they understood and knew the Christ of Christmas. And for your students, your, your uh, children that are here, I think Pastor Jessica gave you a piece of paper. On the back of that piece of paper, I think you'll have something like this on there. And can I just share it with you that are here and with you that are watching online? And it says this, it says, I want you to know today that Christ, first of all, cares about your every need. He cares about you. He also has a plan for your life. He reaches out to you just as you are. He invites you to know him personally. He saves you from your past, and he takes you to your new life. Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God, the Good Shepherd, is here for you, for me, for those of you that are watching, for our children and our children's children. He is still the Christ. He is still the Messiah. He is still the Savior. He is still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there's no one who can do the things that he does. He is looking for you. He is looking for me. And he cares about my struggles. He cares about my challenges. He cares about everything that's going on. He cares about my eternity. He cares about my health. He cares about my children. He cares about my grandchildren. He cares about everything that's going on around me. And he has a plan for my life. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your children and your children's children. See, the beauty of Christmas is that this child who was born comes and he has a plan for our life. And while he received me just like I am, wherever you are, if you're watching out there, you say, well, man, you know, I can't tell you how many people have said, I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up. I can't tell you how many times the people have said, Pastor, I invite people to church all the time still. I don't use this card. I just found that I'm, I'm going to make the new version of the 2021, 22 version of it. But it's still the same message of a God who comes to, to seek and to save the lost and to give us a new life. And while he receives me like I am, he didn't leave me like I was. He comes to change me, to help me, to change my attitudes and my thoughts and how I live my life because he comes and he begins to work from the inside out. And he, he takes me from my ways and my thoughts and my plans to his ways and his thoughts and his plans. And I want us to remember that this Christmas season. That wherever you find yourself today, there is a shepherd who is still saying, I invite you into a personal relationship with me. Every eye closed in this place. If you've never surrendered yourself, if you're just following aimlessly, if we're following culture, we're following popular opinion, if we're following whatever, and you're not hearing the voice of the shepherd says, my sheep hear my, have ears to hear my voice and no other voice will they follow. We have to come into the fold. We have to, we have to receive the gift of God. We have to receive Christ. We have to repent of our old lives and our sins. He comes to forgive us of our sins. As a matter of fact, in Hosea chapter 6, he says, Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will rise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning, and he will come to us like rain, the latter and the former rain on the earth. He comes to seek and to save those that are lost and all we have to do is turn from where we were headed without him and turn towards him and say forgive me for living like there is no God forgive me for celebrating the holiday of Christmas but not acknowledging the Christ who has come to save me and heal me and restore me and lead me into my new life right there where you are right there where you are would you surrender your life to Jesus, the Christ, he cares about you. He has a plan for your life. He reaches out to you just as you are and invites you to know him personally today. He saves you from your past and he takes you to your new life. Jesus Christ, the son of God, is here for you and me today. Lord, we surrender to you. Thank you for the birth of of the child, the son who was given, and thank you for the good shepherd who leads us and guides us every moment of our lives. In Jesus' name. Would you stand to your feet? I don't know about you, but this Jesus, the good shepherd, name above all names, no, no one like him, God has given them the name above all names where at the mention of his name, demons flee. There's healing in the name of Jesus. And as we go into this song and declare your great name, I'm asking God to bring healing to us. 
whether it's emotional through things that you've been through in the last two years, if you're bound by some form of addiction or something, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that the enemy's got you bound up in an area of your life, there's freedom in the name of Jesus today. If you are physically struggling in an area of your life, there's healing in the name of Jehovah Rophi, my healer. And today as we sing this song, that's my prayer. Can we receive not just the, the message of Christmas, but the Christ in Christmas and know that he comes to heal and to restore and to save and to lead and to direct and to bring clarity to us so we can walk forward out of 2021 and into 2022. Can we do that this morning? Come on, let's sing that song one more time this morning. Jesus, you are worthy. Come on, let's declare it this morning. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we worship you this morning again, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, those of you that are watching online, would you stand get to your feet and begin to just thank him and worship him for who he was, who he is, who he will forever be. Let's lift up his name as we end out this year. talking about his great name and declaring what he can do and not giving him the opportunity as we gather in his name here or there for him to be that to redeem us to save us to heal us I felt this from the very beginning of this worship service this morning if you are sick in body physically you need a physical healing. we believe that the Bible teaches that God still heals today now, we can't heal people, we pray for people. Sometimes he heals quickly, sometimes it's a process. I don't understand all of that, but I believe in his word. I believe his word is true. I believe he can do what his word says he can do. And so if you're here, if you're standing out there uh, and you need a physical healing, would you just, would, would you, man, I don't know how to do this this morning, to be very honest with you, especially those of you. Would you, if your back's hurting, would you, just, would you just put your hand on your back or your shoulder? Or if you're praying for somebody, just as a form of, 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 listen, sometimes faith is active. We step out. And I want to pray for God. Let me just raise your hand. Does anybody here physically need healing? I'm just, I do. 
I, I, need, I need God to touch a physical part of my, anybody here need healing? Somebody said, oh man, I didn't know this was that kind of church. This is that kind of church. We believe that Jesus still heals today, whether you're here or online. So if you need healing, would you lift your heart? Would you lift your hands to him? And as we sing this song, I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna declare. We're just gonna declare, Isaiah 53 says that by his stripes we are healed. Psalm 107, 20 says that he sent his word and he healed the people. And so Father God, in agreement to your word, Lord, I'm asking you, Jesus, the Christ, the son who was born, the, the infant that we celebrated his birth, who grew to be a man and you touched and you healed and you restored and you, you picked up the lame, oh God, and you gave sight to the blind, oh God, and, and you healed those that were broken physically and spiritually and emotionally, oh God, and we ask you today to be that one, to be Jehovah, Jehovah Rophi, the God that heals these people. God, we pray for healing. Those that are home that are battling sickness and disease, we speak healing to you in Jesus' name. May God arise and his enemies be scattered. May there be an awakening and a refreshing in the presence of God. And would you strengthen our feeble bodies today in Jesus' name. I say be healed in Jesus' name this day. Come on, let's thank God that he's still the good shepherd and he finds his sheep and he brings strength and comfort to us in Jesus' name. online today. We hope this message was encouraging and a blessing to your life. If you have a prayer request, let us know at gsccconnect.com or on the GSCC Connect app. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and on Instagram. See you next week.